Hi everyone, this is Joel at MetaGeek, and in this video, we're gonna talk about optimizing Wi-Fi and Zigbee in home automation environments with Wi-Spy and Channelizer. Wi-Fi networks and Zigbee networks both operate in 2.4 gigahertz, and they often end up interfering with each other, but with Channelizer, you can plan a Wi-Fi and Zigbee deployment, or you can troubleshoot an existing deployment that isn't working properly. Let's start with a quick overview of Channelizer. The first thing that you wanna be familiar with is the density view. Now the density view shows us several things. It shows us what's currently happening in the spectrum, where things are talking in the spectrum, how loud they're talking, and how often they're talking. So the height of the graph tells us how loud something is talking. This is sometimes called the amplitude. And the color of the graph shows us how often things are talking. This is called utilization. So a blue spike is a short signal like a clap, whereas a red shape indicates constant activity like an air horn. Directly below the density view is the waterfall view, and the waterfall view shows us what has happened over a period of time. It's kind of like a seismometer for earthquakes. With a seismometer, when we see a big scribble, we know that there was an earthquake, but when we see a straight line, we know that there was no earthquake. But with the waterfall view, instead of showing what happened with a scribble, we show what happened with color. And instead of showing us how often things are talking with color, like we do with color by utilization in the density view, with the waterfall view, we're coloring by amplitude. And what that means is that the more intense the color is, the louder something is talking. So if you see a blue dot, you know that something talked quietly. But if you see a red dot, you know that something talked louder and with more amplitude. On the left-hand side of Channelizer, we can see the navigation waterfall. Now the navigation waterfall is identical to our primary waterfall view, but instead of showing us a specific slice of time with the navigation waterfall, we're showing the entire recording from start to finish. Channelizer is a lot like a DVR, and the minute that you plug in a Y-Spy and start up the program, it starts recording. And at any time, you can pause and rewind and look at different parts of time throughout the recording. You can also change the amount of time that you're looking at by manually adjusting the two playheads or by adjusting it by time span. I like to use about two minutes when I'm performing spectrum analysis. To further demonstrate waterfall navigation, I've opened up a saved recording. And the neat thing about waterfall navigation is that we get to see the entire recording from start to finish. And so we can see that several events occurred during the course of this recording. So let's take a closer look. I'm just gonna zero in on this by dragging both playheads up and then dragging the top playhead down so that we're only focusing on this specific amount of time. And we can see that we have 55 seconds of this recording selected. And so we can see that during that 55 seconds, we can see that there was a transmission and then it stopped and then it started transmitting again and then took another short break and then uh, transmitted for the rest of this time period that we have selected. And we can see that during tra that transmission, during the amount of time that we have selected with the waterfall navigation, we can see that this shape appeared in the spectrum. This signature appeared in the spectrum. And so up ahead in the recording, we can see that there was another event, a similar looking event, uh, down towards the bottom of the band. So let's go ahead and slide our playheads up here to take a look at what happened. And we can see that a very, very similar event occurred, but with a slightly different shape. Instead of having this flat tabletop shape with the shoulders down each side, this is more of a curve shape with lobes down each side. So we can see that we have a signature that appears to be centered on Wi-Fi channel 11 and a signature that appears to be centered on Wi-Fi channel one, but we don't know what those signatures are. So if we go to the Interferes tab, in the Interferes tab, we have a library of common signatures that you might see in the spectrum. And you may notice that this first one, 802.11b slash g, has a curve shape that's very similar to the one that we're seeing in the density view. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select that signature and I'm gonna hover my mouse in the density view. And what we can quickly see is that these, this signature and the signature that's in the density view match very closely. And so we can assume that this is probably an 802.11b or g device that's talking in the spectrum right now. Let's go and take a look at the other device to see if we can identify what that device is. Now it has the flat tabletop shape with two shoulders down each side, which looks very similar to this 802.11g slash n 
signature that we're seeing in the signatures library. So I'm gonna select that and I'm gonna hover my mouse in the density view. And we can see that it has about the same shape as the signature that we're seeing in the spectrum. So we can probably assume that this shape is an 802.11g or n network. So far in Channelizer, we've been talking about spectrum analysis. We've been looking at spectrum data that's being pulled from YSpy, the raw radio frequency activity that's occurring around you. But what we haven't gotten into yet is Wi-Fi scanning. One thing that Channelizer does is it can scan for wireless networks with a Wi-Fi adapter. Now, one thing to take note of, if you're running Channelizer in a virtual machine on a Mac, you'll want to grab an inexpensive USB wireless adapter to, to pipe into that virtual machine. But if you're running Channelizer on a normal Windows laptop, the Wi-Fi scanning functionality should work out of the box for you. So what I've done here is in the networks table, I've selected a whole bunch of wireless networks. We get to see what the names of each network are and we get to see what channels they're on and a bunch of additional information about them. So I've selected all these wireless networks and I'm gonna go up here to the display selected networks button and I'm gonna click on that. And so now we get this nice overlay of where Wi-Fi networks are landing in the spectrum. Whenever our wireless card detects a wireless network nearby, we can overlay that with the spectrum. Now, there's a lot of networks here, and I only wanna take a look at a couple of specific networks that interest me. So I'm gonna filter out everything except uh, the networks that have 802.11 in the name. So I've filtered down to these two networks. We can see that there's a network that's labeled 802.11g and a network that's labeled 802.11b. And we can see that 802.11b, the, the network called 802.11b is on channel one, and the network that's called 802.11g is on channel 11. Now, if you look at the density view, you'll notice that the flat tabletop shape that we were seeing in the spectrum closely matches the, the box shape that we're drawing with our wireless card. We can see that they're about the same height, and we can see that they're centered on the same channel. And so what we can assume from that is that this Wi-Fi device that's talking on channel 11 and this wireless network that we're detecting on channel 11 are actually one and the same. So let's move our waterfall navigation up to the next event that occurred in the spectrum. And we're up here looking at this curve shape with the lobes down each side. And what you'll notice is that the network that, we're lab that we've labeled 802.11b here has a curve shape. Well, that's because this curve shape is made by an 802.11b network. Since they're about the same height, we know that this network and this shape in the spectrum are one and the same. So now that we've taken a tour of Channelizer and we understand Wi-Fi scanning, let's talk about Zigbee. Now, Wi-Fi is often used for high throughput implementations. Often we see Wi-Fi being used for transferring large files. We see Wi-Fi being used for streaming high definition videos and things like that, which means it's a high throughput standard. It's able to move a lot of data through the air. And what that means is that when a Wi-Fi network is active, we see a, a, we see a very distinct shape. We can see where a wireless network is operating. Zigbee isn't the same way though. Zigbee is a low throughput standard, which means it doesn't need to move very much data. Zigbee is designed for things like moving small amounts of sensory data or turning a light switch on or off. And since Wi-Fi is moving a lot of data through the air, we get to see it very easily, but since Zigbee isn't moving much through the air, it's nearly invisible to a spectrum analyzer. If you do see it in the spectrum, it's gonna have a shape pretty similar to this, a small and short spike that isn't very wide, but typically speaking, you won't even see Zigbee devices um, in the spectrum. So you may be wondering, how do we use a spectrum analyzer to help us deploy and troubleshoot Zigbee installations? What you can do is you can click on the view menu and click Zigbee channels. And what that does is it changes our Wi-Fi channels to these Zigbee labels. And so now you can look at your controller and you can go, oh, well, my Zigbee controller says that my Zigbee network is on channel 21. So if you select the Zigbee signature in the interferes tab and hover it here, we can say, okay, that's about where we can expect our Zigbee network to exist. We know that it's there. Now, one thing I want you to notice is that Wi-Fi channels do not line up with Zigbee channels. If you look at Zigbee channel 11, Zigbee channel 11 is down here at the very bottom end of the band. But if we switch to our Wi-Fi labels again, you'll see that Wi-Fi channel 11 is at the very top of the band. So the takeaway from this is that Zigbee channels and Wi-Fi channels do not line up 
at all. They don't, they don't line up with each other at all. But what they do do is they overlap with each other. They do overlap with each other. They use the exact same slice of spectrum. They use the exact same band, which is why we're going to see interference between them. So let's say that this is our Zigbee and Wi-Fi environment. We have a wireless network on channel, on Wi-Fi channel one. We can switch to Wi-Fi channels. We can see that that Wi-Fi network is centered on Wi-Fi channel one. And if we switch back to our Zigbee channels, we can select a good channel for our wireless network. Now, most Zigbee controllers don't allow you to use channel 25 or 26. Usually, channels 25 and 26 are not available for use. But Zigbee channel 21 is looking pretty good. There's not a whole lot of activity there. There's no activity from the 802.11b network that's down on channel one. So we could select this and make channel 21 our Zigbee channel for our Zigbee network. And we could expect things to work pretty well here because we're not seeing any activity on Zigbee channel 21. So let's say that instead of deploying a new Zigbee network, you are troubleshooting an existing one that's not working properly. And you arrive on site, and the very first thing that you do is you check and you see where your Zigbee network is deployed. And you see by the controller that it's deployed on channel 16. It's on Zigbee channel 16. And since you have a spectrum analyzer, and since a spectrum analyzer is able to see all of the radio frequency activity in the area, when you start using your spectrum analyzer, you realize that the Wi-Fi channel, the Wi-Fi network on channel one is causing interference with Zigbee channel 16. You can see that, that it's causing interference. And not only is it causing interference, since the shape is red, you know that it's talking at least 50% of the time. At least 50% of the time, that Wi-Fi network is utilizing the channel. And to find out exactly how much it's utilizing the channel, you can visit the Utilization tab. You can look at channel 16, and we can see that it's talking on Zigbee channel 16 at least 80% of the time. And whenever this Wi-Fi network is talking, it's going to cancel out the Zigbee network signal because only one signal can exist on a frequency at a time. And since the 802.11b network is talking more often, it's going to cancel out the Zigbee network. So that's why having a spectrum analyzer to see where the interference is is really important. And that's why you can't put a Zigbee network and a wireless network, a Wi-Fi network, on channels that are too close together. So let's take a look at a live environment. And let's try to deploy Zigbee and Wi-Fi in this environment. So let's say that this is a fairly large home and they want both Wi-Fi and they both and they also want home automation with Zigbee. But it's a large enough home that it's going to take three APs. It's going to take three access points to provide Wi-Fi coverage throughout this home. So we've deployed our wireless access points on channels 1, 6, and 11. So our APs are evenly distributed on the three channels that don't overlap so that our wireless network will perform optimally. But when we go to deploy our Zigbee network, we'll quickly find that there's nowhere to put it. Our particular Zigbee controller in this instance does not support channel 25 or 26. It only supports channels 11 through 24. And so any of these Zigbee networks, any of these Zigbee channels are going to partially overlap with a Wi-Fi network. And we've seen what can happen when you try to put a Wi-Fi network and a Zigbee network on the same channel. So we know that that's not an option. To fix the problem, we've made some changes to our wireless network. So we used to have an access point that was on channel 11. We had an AP that was up on channel 11. And what we've done with that AP is we've moved him down to channel 1. Now we now have two access points that are sharing the same channel, but we've placed these two channel 1 access points at opposite ends of the house. So now, since they're at opposite ends of the house, they don't worry, have to worry about taking turns with each other and we've left our access point on channel six alone. And what that's done is that's opened up some room for us to deploy our Zigbee networks. We now have Zigbee channels 21 through 24 to choose from. Since all of our access points for Wi-Fi are on Wi-Fi channel one or Wi-Fi channel six, we now have Zigbee channels 21 through 24 to choose from. If we deploy our Zigbee network on channel 24, it won't encounter any interference from our Wi-Fi networks, and so it'll be able to operate reliably. Thanks for watching this video on optimizing Wi-Fi and Zigbee in a home automation environment with WiSpy and Channelizer. 
If you have any more questions or if you want to learn more about Wi-Fi and spectrum analysis, be sure to visit our website at www.metageek.net forward slash support.